Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series based on engineering drawing. Well, today we're going to precisely talk about auxiliary planes and in today's session, we'll be solving a problem based on projection of planes. Okay, it's going to be a problem based on a hexagonal surface. Now, as far as this problem is concerned, I have already solved this problem. You can check out the link somewhere here, hovering over. Okay, now the method that I had used earlier to solve this problem was what you call the change of position method. And today, I'm going to be solving the same problem with the help of auxiliary plane method. And this is going to be very interesting. And I expect all of you to watch this video right till the end so that you can have a firm grasp on this auxiliary plane method, which is really very less time consuming. So let's kick off today's session. Here we go. So that's the problem. I suggest all of you to pause the video right now so that you can extract all the details from the problem itself. Okay. All right. Now I'm assuming that you've read the problem. Um, we shall go ahead and let's see what the details are. First of all, it's a regular hexagon, something of this sort. All the sides are 25 millimeters and it has a corner on the HP. Okay. Out of all the six corner, there is one such corner which always remains in contact with the HP horizontal plane. Okay. And as far as problems based on projection of planes is concerned, always try to work out the surface inclination. And in this particular case, surface is inclined at 45 degrees to the HP. So it's going to be something like this. All right. And our initial assumption is going to be like this. We're going to assume that the entire surface will be resting onto the horizontal plane. And then we just got to think from where can we see the true shape of this surface. So guys, one thing is for sure, the true shape of this surface can only be seen from the top. Therefore, you have to begin by making the top view first that is made below X, Y line. Okay, so what's next? But again, there is a question tinkling in your mind and my mind. What sort of a top view are we going to make right now? Whether it's going to be like this, whether it's going to be like this or it's going to be like this. Okay, option one, option two, which is the right option? That is something which needs to be worked out. Okay, let's analyze both the options and then we'll reach a conclusion, I'm sure. So if you take this option, if you keep it like this onto the horizontal plane and if we do the surface inclination, what happens? All the five corners are up in the air and only one corner remains grounded or in contact with the horizontal plane. And this is something which is a condition given in the problem itself. But if you take option two, it's like this. When you incline the surface, something of this sort happens. In this case, you can clearly see these four corners are up in the air and only one edge remains grounded. That is not a condition given in the problem. Okay, that is not a requirement of the problem. What our requirement is when the surface inclination happens at that point in time, one of the corners has to remain grounded, has to remain in contact with the horizontal plane. And that's why we're going to choose this as the top view. This is how we're going to keep it onto the horizontal plane that's the top view so that when you incline it all the five corners are up in the air with one corner still in contact with the ground with the horizontal plane that's our initial assumption so why wait let's begin okay here we go now i'll provide you two different solutions although the final product or the final view is going to be same in both the cases but there are two different approaches in this auxiliary plane method only okay now let's have an x y line and when you are viewing this hexagon from the top you're going to see this okay let me make this all of you know how to make a hexagon internal angles are 120 degrees so that's it all the corners um, let's name them a b c d e f now let's take a look at this hexagon from the front it's going to look something like this there you go and this zigzag portion over here a b c d will be seen from the front okay like this that's the hexagons uh, that's the hexagon's front view. Done. What's next? Okay, now what we need to do is, guys, listen to this very carefully. Okay, so there are two different kinds of auxiliary planes. One is the auxiliary inclined plane in which auxiliary top views are obtained, while the other one is the auxiliary vertical plane in which auxiliary front views are obtained. Okay, <clears throat> now when you incline the surface, either this way or this way, but the magnitude has got to be 45 degrees. Remember this. When you incline the surface 
and when you try to take a look at this from the top what happens you sort of observe a squeezed up hexagon isn't it right so what we'll do is we are not going to change the position of the object what we'll do is we'll keep the object as it is in its state of equilibrium okay and we'll keep an auxiliary plane over here all right we'll keep an auxiliary inclined plane over here making an angle of 45 degrees with this object okay and we are going to watch this from over here so that we can have an image of this surface over to this side of the auxiliary plane inclined plane and this image is what we refer to as the auxiliary top view and we have to flip this something of this sort and therefore we are going to see this image over here let me tell you exactly how all of this stuff can be done so it's going to be like this here we go now since one corner has to remain grounded so i've made sure that this auxiliary inclined plane okay to, when you watch this right in front you're going to see this line you're not going to see the plane surface of the auxiliary inclined plane rather you're going to see this line right making an angle of 45 degrees with this object so that's it <clears throat> now let me draw the perpendicular line something of this sort obviously 45 degrees make sure that these lines are crossing x1 y1 at an angle of 90 degrees all of them are parallel so you've got to do this stuff with the help of a mini drafter okay what's next so what essentially we are doing is we are trying to prepare the auxiliary top view over here okay so the previous top view has to be taken as the reference so the previous top view was this okay it was made with the help of this xy line or the reference line so you've got to take arcs with respect to xy of this top view okay and you have got to put them up over here with reference to or with respect to x1 y1 it's going to be very simple guys watch this very carefully now let's say we want to locate point a okay over here we'll have the auxiliary top view okay so the distance of point a from x y is this much from here to here so keep one leg of your compass here or the leg over here with that much amount as the radii keep your compass here cut an arc and that's a simple now let's say we want to locate point b how can that be done it's very simple again with x y as the reference line okay so keep one leg of your compass here other leg at b with that much amount as the radii and take this as the center all right cut an arc that's point b let's say we want to have point c again it's very simple keep one leg over here other leg over here and with this as the center you need to cut an arc here again c and this way you can obtain all the remaining points and that's how you're going to have the auxiliary top view so this is exactly how the hexagon looks okay if you keep it like this at an angle of 45 degrees and you when you when you watch this from over here this is exactly how it looks right so that's the top view of the hexagon which we have incorporated over to this side all right so what's next let me wipe off the sweat now the next step is going to be very interesting now guys watch this if i keep the hexagon like this okay watch this very carefully this is the diagonal through the corner through the corner which is in the hp this is the diagonal through the corner which is in the hp so right now in this position you can see the true length of the diagonal isn't it okay but when i incline the surface of this hexagonal plane what happens apart from the hexagonal squeezing up this diagonal also squeezes up from the top okay so that's the top view of the diagonal which you can see over here this is ad that's the top view of the diagonal right this is the true length of the diagonal and that's the top view of the diagonal in the next step what we have to do is we have to incline the top view of the diagonal with respect to the vertical plane so what the method that we are adopting is the auxiliary plane method and here we've got to make use of the auxiliary vertical plane okay since this diagonal has to be inclined to the vertical plane here in this method we have to incline this with the auxiliary vertical plane where we are going to obtain the final front view that's it that's exactly what we're going to be doing it's going to be very simple now i'm not going to change the position of this object rather i'll try to adjust a plane here okay such that it makes an angle of how much 60 degrees with this diagonal okay something of this sort right here the angle made is 60 degrees now again the process is very simple you have got to project lines from all these six points in such a way that they intersect x2 y2 at an angle of 90 degrees this way that's it now 
what essentially we are doing is we are trying to create the front view over here or the auxiliary front view you can say okay now what we have to do is we have to create the auxiliary front view over here now the front view just before this one was this now before x2 y2 we have x1 y1 what we'll do is we'll take the arcs from x1 y1 of this front view and we are going to put them up over here with respect to x2 y2 it's going to be very simple listen to this very carefully you have got to take x1 y1 as a reference take the arcs of this front view and you have got to put them up with respect to x2 y2 over here and that's going to be your final front view watch this a dash right so the distance of a dash from x1 y1 is how much zero obviously no distance so where is a here is a and that's going to be point a dash since it's a front view now let's try to locate point p dash now from x1 y1 the distance is from here to here so keep one leg of your compass here other leg here and with that much amount as the radii and with this guy as the center again you need to put an arc over here that's going to be point b let's do this drill once again and let's say we want to have point c dash somewhere along this line so you need to keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here and with that much amount as the radii let's travel this way and this way with this guy as the center you need to put one more arc and that's going to be point c dash similarly you can obtain the remaining points and when you join all of them in proper sequence this is exactly what you're going to get and that's the final front view that's it you can clearly see that one corner is still remaining grounded or still in contact with the horizontal plane since its front view is showing that this point is uh, lying on the xy line itself that is a dash is on the xy line itself okay now let me show you one more method one more way of using this auxiliary plane method so the first two steps are going to be pretty much the same like this okay same stuff it's the same stuff now here i'm going to be adjusting this auxiliary vertical plane in a sort of different way angle is going to be same like this okay the angle between this ad that is top view of the diagonal and this auxiliary vertical plane is going to remain same that is 60 degrees let me have the projector lines that's it perpendicular to x2 y2 okay so what are we doing we are trying to create the auxiliary front view okay with reference to x2 x2 y2 now for creating this front view we need to take the reference of another front view just before this where is the front view here it is that's the front view just before this front view we have this front view in the form of a straight line okay so before x2 y2 we have x1 y1 we have to take x1 y1 as the reference line and then let's say we want to locate point a dash okay where is it going to be so the distance of point a dash from x1 y1 is how much it's zero we'll travel here here and that's a dash okay let's try to locate b dash um keep one leg of your compass here or they like at b dash here and with this guy as the center what an arc that's point b dash similarly you can locate the remaining points it's going to be very simple i'm sure and when you join all of them this is exactly what you're going to get both of them are pretty much the same okay the only thing is that inclination in both the cases have been uh, achieved in a sort of different way although the magnitude is same 60 degrees so guys that was all from my side if you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you get an update you get a notification i'm going to be back with more such videos on auxiliary planes and in the upcoming videos i'm going to be discussing projection of solids and projection of lines until then have a great day take care bye bye